So you want to learn how to create this unique chain glow effect inside of After Effects? Well, I'm about to break it down quick and easy step by step inside of this tutorial. This effect is actually pretty easy to make if you have the plugins, even though I'm pretty sure I haven't seen a lot of editors do this effect this way. But let's get right into After Effects and I'm gonna break it down. Yo, real quick before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know that I'm Lurking Visuals and I run my own editing store with all of my personal presets and assets that I've been using to edit all of my music videos for years. Because I got tired of spending hours on VFX work when I could basically put all of my effects into presets so i got a bunch of my own presets on my site so if you're a music video editor trying to edit a lot faster or just level up your edits in general feel free to check the link in the description but let's get right into it so i'm in after effects right now and i got this auto music video i didn't do all of these effects this is just from the music video but what i'll be editing on is this chain clip here in the middle the first step would basically be to just duplicate your layer and then name your top layer chain and you can name your bottom layer background just so you have everything a little bit organized and now I'll be selecting my chain layer and start masking out the chain and this chain has a lot of detail so it'll probably take some time to mask out so I'll just speed up this part I won't go through the rotoscoping in depth it's pretty self-explanatory so now that I masked out the chain I would simply just add a refine soft matte effect on and that is just to make the edges a little bit less rough because if I hide my background layer right now you can tell that this chain is a little bit rough around the edges so I just do this to all of my maskings just add on a refine soft matte and drag down the additional edge radius and turn up the feather a little bit and now it should look a little bit better that's a bit too much so I'll turn it down yeah that's cool and now I'll be adding on a glow to this layer which isn't really the main effect but it's cool to have in the background and I'm going to use deep glow but you can use whatever glow you have I can recommend optical glow or sapphire glow if you have one of them I'll just be turning off the threshold to like 85 and let's turn down the exposure at first to like 0.3 and keyframe the exposure and then go all the way to the end here and let's turn up the exposure to like 1.1 and let's turn up the radius too let's do 500 something like this and I'll also turn up the spread to like 50 so now we got a pretty intense glow but it comes in as the scene plays through so you can see if I play through it right now the glow really comes in towards the end which means that I can actually turn it up a little bit more let's do it like this and then I'll be adding on a flicker and I'll be using the sapphire flicker one if you don't have this one you can use a strobe light effect this one but you have to mess a lot with the settings to get a flicker but I can recommend that one at the beginning I'll be turning it down to 0.1 and keyframe it like we did last time and as the scene plays too let's turn it up to like 0.4 it looks good right now but it's a pretty simple go we want something like that stands out a little bit more so to do this I'll be creating a new adjustment layer and to this adjustment layer I'll be adding on a no light factory effect and this one is from Universe, which is also a plugin. But this one is actually crazy. It's basically a lens flare, but I like to use this lens flare for a lot of things. I've used this effect as a muscle flash on the channel before, and you can use it like in so many different ways. It's pretty underrated. I don't see a lot of people using this effect. The first thing that I'll be doing is I'll be keeping the flare category at action and sci-fi. So let's go to the action and sci-fi lenses and select alpha base. Now we got this like pretty bright and kind of white light and I'll be changing the color to this bright blue, something like this. And let's turn down the flare brightness to 80. And let's keyframe the flare brightness, the flare scale and the light location. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that you have to put your light location to the middle of your chain or your subject that you'll be adding the lens flare onto. And let's go to the end of the clip and we can actually move this light location to the chain right there and turn up the flare scale to 1.7 and let's do the flare brightness to 110 so it's pretty bright right now and it looks really good in my opinion but mess with the settings if this doesn't match your clip then go ahead change the settings turn up the scale turn it down change the color whatever you want to you can also mess with the angle but for this lens flare it doesn't make too much of a difference so let's play through and see what we got and this is pretty cool i'm a huge fan of this one uh, I don't think that the light blue matches my scene though so I'll because it's a black and white scene so I'll just turn it all the way back to white but that means that I might have to turn down the brightness a little bit so let's do one five and I'll also be adding on a universe heat wave effect uh, like I said it's from universe 
and I'll just turn down the flow speed to 30 and see what we get. This should give us something a little bit more smooth. And it looks like this right now, which is pretty cool. I'm happy with that. But I'll also add on a chromatic aberration to kind of spice this up a little bit more. So once again, I've used the universe one. So sorry to all of you guys who don't have these plugins. But I'll be putting the chromatic aberration above the heat wave actually. And let's turn it down to zero at the beginning. And let's go all the way to the end and let's turn it up to like 0 0.75. So it's just something subtle. Let's see if I can turn it up a little bit more and still get a clean look. Yeah, let's just turn down the master scale to 0 0.75. And the final step to actually spice this up is a distort chroma effect. But I'll be adding this onto our background layer. And as you can tell right now, we're all over the place. It looks absolutely crazy. Just select your matte from layer. And let's select our chain. And let's grab our source and change it to effects and masks. Now we got our distort chroma just in the background of our effect. So it only affects that area. And now we'll just be messing around, see what we get and see what looks good. And I recommend that you keep the blur lens either pretty low, like around 30. And you will get something like this or extremely high, like 300. And you will get something like this. But I'll keep it at 30. And let's turn down the amount to 0 0.2, at least here in the beginning. And as the scene plays through, I can actually turn it up a little bit. So yeah, I'll simply just turn up the blur amount to 0 0.6 at the end. And let's play it through and see what we we'll get. And that's a pretty cool result. I'm extremely happy with this. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to get access to more cool effects like this one, feel free to check the link in the description to help you edit better and save a lot of time. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.